between these two teams. A stream, of course, going on at the same time. Mouse versus Gamer Legion. And Gamer Legion just got owned on Nuke. They lost 13 1. That's kind of insane, isn't it? Yeah, you don't expect that level of disparity. A lot of players with two guns in their hands over at A. Addict already in heart peasy top. Let's see what they can try and get done. There we go. Opening kill found PZ flushed into the open a little bit. Molly spreads down low. He can't find anything and Goofy trading out Addict. A bomb site belongs to Ents. An attempted flash forward. Goofy looking to fight it, but oh, damn, you're being so low. Has his flank will come through, but the bomb to be planted. He really needs to catch this one for free. For free. For free. God, it's not for free, but hey, he's found it. And he gets the follow-up. Now it becomes a possibility. But again, it's all onto him and he's looking the wrong way. Damien's too low. He can't do anything here, surely. They're both looking in his position. There's no way out of heaven. Time's ticking. And he drops. And take the pistol again. B and K just cannot break through with these pistols. Such a shame as well, because it always feels close for this team. That's a two on four that gets brought into a two on two, but you're right, the low HP is so difficult for Damio to ever get involved, which means Hazard needs to do absolutely everything. Does well to spin on Goofy in the first instance, but from there, Ents just pick and choose which fight they want to take immediately. Force bite. The BNK scout on PZ. He swallowed Deha. They love a second round force. It's yet to work. <laughs> so. Yeah. I'm not sure I love it. Hatter's got himself a nice little spot. Perfect place for the MP9. Face being taken by D Harp. My attic's already down low. I think Ents are very aware of the proclivity for D B and K to go for these second round forces. And they're very concerned about this outside presence. D Harp isn't actually committing. They're just waiting for a reaction. Whether that will come through lobby, whether that will come through outside, but. BNK don't reveal anything, so a flash play in towards A. You're going straight in towards the pistols here. Brace needs to be cleared, and he is. The jump from Goofy is enough, but there strikes Hazard again. Another multi kill by the double doors, and Hades gets overwhelmed by Addicts, which is springing into life out of the vent. And speaking of springing, is a scroll wall jump for d -Hart. Bomb can't currently get planted. Nades great, but Addict steps in, and he does even more. BNK overwhelm Ents. All right, well, the Force Buy works out to perfection. Hazard, what a hero. A double kill with the MP9 he needed to find that impact, and it's enough chaos. You know, Ants are normally a team that thrives in that sort of environment, right? Well, there's a lot of stuff going on at once, but it feels like that they were a little a bit of a step, a hop step in behind BNK, who were able to exploit this chaos, jumping out of vents, players getting caught off, both Hades and, and Deha, both caught by surprise. Ants are going to force back, but their force by is nowhere near as good as the ruse was. All right, nice. Good damage already being done to Deha. Damio just kicks off the proceedings. Deha will make it down. Will that be accounted for? Will there be a rotation? Ents playing a very similar round to the previous, hoping that there's going to be mistakes trickling in from the CT side. And Deha, I was going to say, might get his, but look at this from Damio. He's already up. Taking the scenic route mm -hmm. outside. Has has also gutted out lobby. They know that Ents are outside. This is the only place they could possibly be. Yeah, and now, yeah, like... You send one of these pushing players back just to cover off the A hit if they do wrap. Nemio is going to continue getting so much information. He has the worst weapon for the job on this patrol because he has to fight incredibly long range. Yeah, he has to switch to the USP if he wants to take that one. But information, stay silent, and he's going to be behind the bomb. So he should be able to close this round, although he might arrive at the wrong time. Yeah, 
they're probably going to be considering vent at this point. So his flank is just information, or maybe not. Hey, he backs up into him. Bomb spotted, bomb dropped. Damier continues, but can't finish Goofy. Glaive trying to flank through, but there's a player tucked in dark peasy. He's the one that has to close because Glaive has found a headshot. And it's all onto Glaive. Time's not with him. And he can't win this round. He can't get the bomb, can't plant it. Just needs to die. But he might not even be allowed that. Oh, after time as well. More aggression, SMGs, which they reluctantly have to bring into this round. Get active early. Yeah, PZ is just gonna lock them out. This is an interesting engagement. The MP9. First, the Glock is always gonna be favorable. The MP9's got ridiculous accuracy at range, in fact, so. Nice little burst taps. That's the bomb on the roof. Thank you for highlighting that one. Not that I think it will matter at all. Kyle is just hoping, praying he can get this Zeus, but he can't. I feel like Glaive is always happy with the SMG. Kyla has a little look-see and he cops a nade straight to the face. Shrapnel in the eyes. Glaive setting up the util. I think he'd be the one kind of at the front of the pack for the execute, but going to support his team as they burst out the hut and successful in the first. Damio up above using the smoke to its full advantage. Has to stop to the USP. Can't get it done. Is traded but Brace quick to step in. Puts it into the two on two and Addict is in the back of CT vents the whole time just sitting lying in wait. Finally strikes and Deha can't flush him out just trying to spam him. Brace needs to come and support. Addict's going to fall. One more shot will do it. Deha. <laughs> One more shot indeed. And there's a chance now for him to clutch. Doesn't have that bomb. Brace knows it. In fact, he's walked all the way along Mustang. Deha, surely not going to be suspecting this position. Goes for the clear, spots him, but Brace wins out the duel. A massive round for Bad News Kangaroos. We're so back, Kangaroos. Hazard's having a fun one. Seven for three. Ooh. Right. All good. Uh, interesting for Ents, you know, we, we talked about kind of the positioning and, you know, Dihar's interview where he talked about, you know, playing the position he's comfortable in, not being a star player. Nuke is kind of the one exception to that, where he plays outside, and that was always the case, even on um, the previous iteration of Ents. Which, uh, it's interesting, right? Because 
outside is, you know, often a position you'll put, you know, some of your best rifles in. But we do see, you know, some IGLs take up that position. That's obviously one that Dehar finds suits his play style. So I think maybe just, you know, because it's a position that you can play with a lot of timings and play around the util a lot, it relies a lot more on outthinking your opponent more so, or, you know, sometimes entirely to, to win rounds versus, you know, necessarily out aiming them. So could be part of why he enjoys it. Certainly why I enjoy it. Good control. Brave. Having a look. Brace can't support ramp, so he has to fall off. Oh, Kyla. Catches Damio but the trade yeah, straight good trade. Smoke. That alleviates a little bit of pressure, but this is what Dehar's hoping for. Reaction with good ramp space for them to swing, but caught between two mines. Hazard steps back and he finds another kill. Hazard's been phenomenal. Goofy now left to step up to the plate and he can't do it. And they know they lost that ramp space. Hades is the only player here. 50 seconds. And a one on four now turned into something maybe a little bit more digestible. The B and K are going to group together, establish these crossfires, and the bomb is just beyond where his teammates have all fallen. 30 seconds left. And I don't think you even really want to go for this if you're Hades. Yeah, Lost Bonus is built up. We're saving the AK with $800. He can buy Smoke Molly or whatever he wants to buy. He knows the round is surely not winnable. So it does mean that Hazard won't get his ace. 4K is nice, though. I feel like that would have been the, the good moment for the Hazard go at it pun. Oh, well. Great round from him, regardless. And a great half already for being k It's got to be said. Feels like yeah, the, the mid yeah, round I mean, was really right. nice there from BNK, and D had read into it. He knows that there's going to be a push on the other side of the map. If you lose ramp, they're probably going to contest for outside just to try and cut the map down into more bite sized pieces and also kind of restrict ends to where they can go, funnel them into sort of their setup so they can get ahead of the rotations down towards B. But D has saw two players. He saw one on the very right hand side of the screen crossing towards right side garage. And then that was the exact moment the main player stepped out. Hazard grabs the kill. He then spins back ground and expects contact. And he collects all those kills ahead of the utility they throw in towards main. So that's a moment of individual brilliance coming in. Despite losing ramp. They've regained control of the round. And lack of bomb plants here has been a, a fundamental issue for Ents. It's consistent where they have one rifle with Tech 9s, then followed in by a buy where they don't have everything. This is going to be a little bit faster, but Damio just on top of the silos feels really good. Flashbang completely blinds him, but Hazard yet again steps up and tries to deliver. Between him and Damio, they will get the kills. PZ remains it and puts it in the advantage. It might have to be a retake here for BNK, but at least they got the numbers advantage. It's going to take a minute. Bomb just gets picked up. Flashbang can be set up. And they just run over. PZ goes first to the USP. He's just there to be traded, though. Brace gets the double. And a beautiful retake. Well, <laughs> the bomb doesn't even get planted, but a preemptive retake is successful. This is looking sick from the ruse. Yeah, they're looking really good. And even guaranteeing one for ones is fantastic for BNK in this position because it just means that PZ can step out. And notice how he doesn't overextend. He grabs one kill, he falls back. He then waits for the second player to come up together with him. And then they both swing. Yeah, again, BNK are playing ahead of all of the utility. A little bit of a tech issue here. But no troubles really on the server for the Aussies. Consistent pressure being applied. And for Ents, you've really got to start raising some eyebrows here. They've got to give themselves a foundation to work with from that T side. Otherwise, we're going to a third. Got to put in that steam code. 
but you're bruising the air. Or B and K. I actually don't know what the copy pasta is for this team. I don't know if I'm creative enough to, to think of a copy pasta on the fly. That one's okay, I guess. Doesn't normally they rhyme when you have a good copy pasta. True. You trying to think of one? Yeah. <laughs> that silence is deafening. Yeah, it was all it was just really just not good at all. So yeah. I say any of them. Yeah. Normally it's like spa spam spam this emoji for Oh yeah. Spam this. <laughs> spam this poo to help out the room. <laughs> oh, no. That that works too. Spam this poo to help out the ruse. Spam this poo to help out the ruse. All right, guys, in the chat, let's get Spam. shit posting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. What's even worse is, obviously, you can't talk during technical pauses. So now you just have to sit in silence, look at the school board if you're Ents, and be like, Really? 7 1? What's happening here? I feel like they've just not really been doing things together as a unit outside of the A plays. There hasn't been a round outside of maybe the first three where Ents have sent all five players down secret, all five players in towards ramp. They tried that a couple of times and then reset into a lobby hit. I feel like they're, they're really overcomplicating a lot of these mid rounds when they don't really need to. Right, we're back. Hi, back. What? <laughs> I said we're back. I'm not. I'm not like a hive mind. <laughs> Could be. You're representing. Yeah, imagine. Oh yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know if I represent the whole nation of Australia. Because we've got five guys that are doing a pretty good of it, job of it. Kaza has been leading the charge, leads it in towards lobby. But it's Damio getting the second attic with the first. And aggression works out well for the start of this round. TZ is holding for Deha. They've plugged every gap. Really good call. Our brace. Coming off the back of a just a delay in play as well. BNK have not shown any aggressiveness anywhere on the map early. Hades trying to fake out that he's jumped off main roof. But Damio's locked in. A three on two. And with Hades' position being so committed, this leaves a lot of responsibility to Glaive to be able to try and unravel some of these players. If he's able to find Damio, then Hades can come and join him. All right. Now you know where Glaive is. You should know Hades immediately off the drop. Damio's going to spot it, but Hades is fast on the shots. Almost burns out, but stays alive. Attic doesn't swing immediately. So playing respectfully, PZ is going to swap over to the AK from the AWP. Smoke forward to allow the main plant. Good Molotov too is going to force Attic off. So they will get the bomb plant down. Nice blow on the smoke, but can't quite convert the spray. Both are low. Attic has a chance here. In towards heaven. Being covered from CT vent. Needs to find this fight first. How good is he going to be on clearing these angles? First is good. Spots the second. Attic with both. It's a shutdown for Bad News Kangaroos. Ents cannot cut a break. No, they can't whatsoever. But they the way that they get into that bomb site is actually really clever. Molly from Glaive. Again, it's creating all of these audio cues. And as soon as the nade is also thrown towards main, the explosion, the minute that explosion happens, that's when Hades drops. So he masks the audio, gets in this fight on towards top part. Damien doesn't stand a chance. But in the one on two where they're so battered and bruised from getting into the bomb site in the first place, and even from their own utility, it's Addict that steps up. Finally, all these clutches are going in favor of Bad News Kangaroos. A bomb plant, finally a tiny bit of respite. But for Ents, the maximum amounts of rounds they can achieve here is four. And it's not been a single AWP available for Hades this entire half. Yeah, it's like a bomb plant, right? Like, as you mentioned. Yeah. They get it this round, or round previously. Do 
Pierre has been trying his hardest outside, but it's a, it's a struggle for him. He's gotten down secret quite a lot, but it always feels like Fatty's kangaroos are fully aware of when he gets down there. The nades don't find their mark either. And, okay, I was wondering where all the smokes were. I was a little worried, but they do have a second wall that can be thrown. So that's all of their smokes thrown at this stage. Yeah, but they needed to have someone going down there with them, or at least in the first volley, because PZ's down secret and he goes, well, I don't see anyone. So Bad News Kangaroos can still keep this same setup in place. A boost up towards ramp is also really nice because suddenly Attic can go back towards heaven and help out A. 40 seconds left. Ents needs to break this defense. It's going to be tough. They, they need Attic to get here though quickly. A clean kill on the entry means it's just Hazard. He's fully blinded. Taken down. Attic spins through. Needs the multi and he finds two. It still keeps the advantage for Ents and with PZ spotted. Diha able to catch him. The old barrel as it comes up. BNK, you know, they had all the information, but I think they were a little too late on supporting the A bomb site. And it felt like both players that were defending were destroyed by the flashbangs. Yeah, it's really nice. We're seeing this flash come in from heart a lot more now to aid these executes through A. It's just sort of, there's like a little square that you line it up with and it, it lands perfectly to the point where back sight is full blind. Anyone playing close is just going to get railed fast to play again for Ents. They're now trying to take command of this situation and it works out perfectly. Goofy hitting every single shot. Hades making sure that no one can instantly flank. That's a statement from Ents. You want to try push us? Well, try and deal with this. Yeah, it's taken them a moment to arrive in the server, but they, they're certainly starting to lock in. It does feel like it could be too late, though. Eight rounds is massive, even if the Roos don't get another. Do we need to save these two weapons? They forced into this one. There was two players with pistols. The only rifle that dropped to get a kill, at least. But we're really going to be relying on PZ in the next round, I feel, because, yeah, it's going to be, what, two and a half? Not even. 2K for these players. So we're, we're looking at this warp, at this M4, needing to get active in this final round. Seems to have been very good at sort of trying to enable their rifles early. Just trying to think what we haven't seen out of Bad News Kangaroos that could potentially catch Ents off guard. We've seen a lot of plays starting towards Secret. Peasy's got the spawn to maybe run to Red Box. That's the furthest advance we would have seen anyone from Bad News Kangaroos outside. And yeah, they're, they're sending... I was going to say, the rifle's in. Instead, it's Peasy on the door. Peasy's just run through. Are they in lobby? Not quite. He's gone down the vent instead. Okay. MP9's in a good position. Beautiful HE. Thank you through me. Oh. That's the exact right play. Demio gets caught by Kyla. And they just brute force the site. The weaponry advantage. PZ in the wrong position to be able to get anything done. He might even get caught by Hades. Indeed he is. It's all into brace. A 1v5. Not going to eventuate. Smoke blown. Spotted. 80s Hawk finishes the job and ends will end the hub with four of the back of three in a row. Flames now is Twist. They are falling like flies, face clan on this bomb site. Fucking booted again.
Bro, don't we have a game? Yeah, but finish saving, so... Let's Holy go, guys. shit, Fender. Right? I thought you were going to save. Yo, Rookie, wake up now. Hey, 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 chill. One eco and we win, okay? What do you mean, eco? Just run around. How? Spam this eight to make Glaive great because Entz needs to recover on the CT side. Eight rounds from Bad News Kangaroos in what was otherwise a pretty dominant CT side. They always felt like they were in control. They're really limited to what Entz wanted to do in these rounds. It wasn't until the, the tail end of that first half where they started getting a little bit in their face that Bad News Kangaroos started to falter. One pistol and hey, guess what? Anubis, we could run and truly be on the way. Yeah, B and K haven't won a pistol yet. I'm waiting for it. Maybe this is the, the, the time they do it. She has jiggling with a smoke. She'll drop just to his right. Oh, okay. Dijon command. Diha will hit the first. Oh, Diha deletes them. Who's rap? It's Diha's rap. No more pistol. BNK not breaking the streak anytime soon. Hades makes it so. Sick round. As soon as he sees the, the shadows, smoke drops, Jewel Beretta's up close. Uh, there's only going to be one victor. I thought he'd get maybe a couple, but no, he just takes the whole lot. Commanding, of course, smile's not etched across Ence's face yet. They know they've got a job to do. But this definitely helps out. Only losing one in the pistol. Kickstart your CT side campaign. No bomb plan. It's still going to be the force here for BNK. And they made the force work. To be fair to them. On that second round. Hoping for a little bit more. And they want to challenge. This time Glaive over at ramp. Yeah. I don't know. Another bomb plant. I don't necessarily love the force. But they 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 seem to. We'll see what they can find with it. Now interesting strategy. So Brace is gonna throw one diag one diag smoke. No, there might be a second he can pick up. Yeah, so he's got the second. Okay. The outside smokes go down, and you, and you feel that, you know, if it's a force, they're throwing two outside smokes. Surely not going to be faking it, but they are faking it, you see. However, it's not really going to make these defenders move too much. Hades is forced off. That's caused the drop down. Kyla 
That's a good spot. Good flashbang. He's forced back. Glaive has to step up and he can only get one. So they've managed to brute force their way through and they have completely caught ends out. They're positioning. They've got two players down the vent. Dihar's in heaven. They have to wrap all the way around secret. Unless there's one on the site, there, there's no kits. So they've got to be quite quick about this. Two flashbangs to get Ents in a position to go for this. It's great. Did it even blow the, the gun off the, the top of heaven? Not quite. Flashbang to set up Dihar. And he can't get past Brace. Tech 9 chimes out, but that's where PZ steps in. And Hades now feels like he needs to save. As we mentioned, no kit, no time. BNK. That's really well done. The diagonal smokes were the initial sort of wave of doubt creeping into Ents' mind, but it's the pressure over at ramp that fully sells the idea that B and K are going down towards B. Instead, they reset, they overwhelm A, and they keep Ents at bay. I actually have been really liking Brace's calling this series, right? It just feels like on this T side, they've got a lot of cool ideas. And for, for the Ruse, who needs a pistol round if you win the second? This is the key one, though, because obviously ends have to force back. It is M4. Big ticket item. Against Galil's an AK and a Mac 10. So all the advantages should be for the Ruse. This round's going to have to be about Obviously, making sure you figure out whether Ents are going to be forcing in. They obviously will be, but also just getting rid of all the utility before you execute. So you just get past three smokes. Hades just standing behind this one. There's only one smoke here, so PZ's going to be taking a lot of space. Okay, second one's landed as well. So Hades won't be able to see past this. Could go in towards Garage to get a fight, but Peasy's not interested. He's already made it down in towards Secret. Yeah, he's not been spotted either. Haiti is repositioning towards Main. I wonder if they're going to call that there's a gap there because Peasy has managed to get down and Ents, I don't think, are aware of it at all. Oh, okay. Oh. Heads up play, I guess. Literally. Yeah, well, heads down. Thumbs up. Shout out everyone's childhood. Ramp, the play, but it's a double setup on the defense. Glaive gets spotted, and that sets up Hades for the bait. And they're bailing. For all the praise and the calling, they're starting to look a little bit flustered. PZ, with all his positional advantage, doesn't look like he's going to get much from it. They, they can't win this round. They're just going to save these three rifles. Yeah, that's a really tough one because they, they fully anticipated that Ents would send someone down towards B. Maybe a little bit early for that on the floor. But they're really hoping that there'll be a reaction from outside. Hades get, gave it a little bit of a cursory glance, but ultimately the, the setup was to bring him back over towards ramp. Glaive was to take the contact. And if they go down towards B, bad news can cruise. You've got quick rotates from ramp. You've also got the, the vent drop that is appropriate for teams to make their way forward so making sure they're together is everything not making these mistakes and hades swings it goes straight into the flashbang of addicts pz finishes the job so great start but hazard and pz are walking wounded a lot of damage done to the t's they're gonna disengage from outside just leave addict on the lurk and look at the attention that's been given over by Ents to outside. Oh, Addict. Ouchie. I don't think anyone would have heard the sound cue of him being there though, so he can still be threatening. This is so tough with three players, so low. You actually give the advantage for Ents here despite the extra player for the ruse. I like the idea, though, to, to go outside and try and take the gunfights long range. Kyla now to be tested at ramp yet again. Good angle for him to fall back, and Glaive is looking to step in. They're going to bypass him. They want to try and eliminate Glaive over at hell. 
Glaive will hear the footsteps and they back out of it. Carlo will now be called over. 30 seconds. They're going to try and split through main here and go in towards A. Goofy might be caught off if he's not careful. It all comes down to timing. The Goofy is the one that's under threat here from every angle and he is caught off. d Harp finds success with one, but they're successful in trading him and that's the big key part. Bond to be planted. At least Glaive gets to heaven quickly, but you've still got two of the Glaive he plays alive. No one's covering. Glaive able to swing out and get one for free. Attic doesn't quite have the angle to take the fight. And now he's spotting more Glaive with the double. Can he make it three brace? The one that looks to deny, but Kyla from heaven strikes. So it will be a successful retake for Ents. You gotta really credit the call in again from Brace though, because they take space. They're very quiet about taking hell, but they gain the control. Kyla's really committed in towards B. Glaive sees the shoulder. And he's now worried about them falling back. And as they hit on towards A, the timing of the lurk out of hazard is everything. Just make sure that he can grab it. On towards Goofy. A really tough one there for Ents, but they're able to make it work. Cuban now just reinforcing. Saw a really good YouTube video from Ash, Gamer Legion's coach. Highly recommend everyone checking out his YouTube channel as well because they're really well edited videos. But he gave a he gave an insight into what it actually means to be a coach and obviously the principles. And it, it's obviously different for sort of every coach, of course. But he was saying in game and in matches when he's taking timeouts, it's just about reminding players of certain things not tactics in the match itself but reminding what they've worked on how hard they've worked to be here in the first place just inspiring and keeping the, the mood confident it uh didn't work for them earlier though <laughs> when they got 13 ones does look like they're bouncing back on that map too though bnk just the pistol deha under threat and dealt with Bomb gets down outside quickly. Has been rotations already. Actually, the bomb comes back up. Looking desperately for this gun. Brace will collect it. He thought when BNK won that second round force that it was going to put Ents on the back foot and set them up for a successful T side. It's going to be a one-round game momentarily. Bomb plant would be nice. PZ has already kept extra money for a future AWP. Glaive's hanging about. We'll get this information momentarily. Maybe. No, we're actually a little bit. Oh, that's so smart. Okay. Oh, as it comes back. Oh. <laughs> so that one could have been a kill with the Tech-9. The follow-up tech nine. Maybe that's the one that gets the job done. It does indeed. Has a success. Hades is here. No armor on either of these players. And so Goofy will win out the duel. Leaves it on to Hazza, who has been phenomenal in this map. Time not on his side, despite a great shot onto Goofy. Planting the bomb becomes impossible, especially with the orb providing overwatch. So we do have that one round game. Really smart little micro plays though, just crouching because it's so common for players that are looking from double doors to press up their backs against the wall and you try and see the head, you get a little angle first. So by crouching, looking at the floor, whilst it's a little bit risky because there could be players in towards vent, they completely bypass Glaive. That's why Haz is able to swing from that angle because Glaive is not ready for someone that's already crossed. There's also got the info that they can't be down vent. 9-8. Ents done really well to recover, but PZ just domes. Ents is IGL through the smoke. How much space do they take off the back of this? Hades is already repositioned. And will pluck Hazard out the sky. You were not expecting an orb to be there of all places at the start of a hub. I, I think he was going to be going for an outside push like he was through the secret. And when Glaive falls, yep. he just sticks around. Still a four and four with good control for the roost. P 
He's just going to hang out at ramp and see if there is any further aggression. And him just being there is probably going to keep a play rooted at both Hell and on B. So he can do a lot of work just by staying alive and existing. This is really nice. If they go through main here, although they might even wrap. Okay, so PZ wanted to take the fight on towards Hell, and then that would have accelerated Bad News Kangaroos up Heaven, but D has pretty much onto this now. Tucked in the corner, Damio can come up the ladder at the same time that Addict goes around the corner for the contact, so they can get this trade, or maybe they might not even need one. Addict clears. Goofy down low, needs to survive. Flashbang needs to turn from it, and he does. Straight into the firing line. Goofy lines them up, and he knocks them down as well. Brace, 1v3. First kill is his, fake on the plant, and Hades is dealt with. Sent back to the underworld, and Kyla now needs to reset. Molly's out for Brace. He can't clutch it, but my oh my, that gets really close at the very end. Yeah, Brace almost making it happen. Steps up in these high impact moments, but Goofy, what a hold from him. He's laughing now. That first kill was <laughs> the headshot on the falling player, which is ridiculous. And the second, a beautiful adjustment. I felt like as soon as that second flash kind of hit him, I, I thought he was done for, but maybe the spacing was just a little bit off. I, the decision for the first player to drop is maybe not the right one, or at least if you're going to be doing that, the second player needs to be there immediately, right? So. You can see Demi is just a little bit too slow to be there to get the immediate trade. A great attempt from Brace, that shot onto Hades was insane. The fact that we're getting really good performances out of Brace at the same time, getting almost perfect mid-round calls is a testament to how well and how much prep Bad News Kangaroos have put into this event coming into ESL Pro League. Because it feels like, they're, on this map in particular, they're, they're the better team. It's just, again, sticking the land in, which was such a difficulty in Vertigo. These slight little nuances are the differences between teams at the top level. The margins are so thin. They've allowed Ents to equalize the scoreline. They've got a firm hold back on this series. Great nade on towards Addict to kick things off. And d -Hat. Is behind red once more. Will there be a flash for him? No. Gonna hear the players going, but trade it up to one. And they continue to scale down. Glaive has arrived on this off angle, which should be pretty powerful. PZ on the swing, though, wins out that duel. So a player advantage for the ruse and full control down lower. The bomb was spotted. Hades. Tries to slot on in, make sure they can't get it down. Brace is very well known. Goofy actually had a good little spot there. Uh, what? Another fight where you feel that Bad News Kangaroo shouldn't be winning it. But both of those sequentially have set them up for this round. And it's Bad News Kangaroos yet again putting map control quite deep into a site and then repositioning themselves. You never know which way they're going to go. Glaive has always been this player that's rotated down secret. He's always been that guy, whether it's over at Double Doors, whether it's pushing in towards secret. So you know once you deal with him, you've got a little bit of a timing window. There's not going to be another player there for ends. And that's what Brace is exploiting. He's trying to get these reactions elsewhere. I feel like the, the one on main was a little bit unfortunate because the way the smoke landed... Goofy is really trying to find an angle where he could deal with Brace. Doesn't pan out in the way he expects. Double digits. Now for Bad News Kangaroos. They finally get that T round they've been looking for, right? That's the first one since that second round force that they've been able to successfully get, despite a few rounds where they've got the bomb down and been in decent post plants. And so they've been relentless. They could guarantee OT here. Bye's not amazing. Goofy's on a 5.7. D has on an MP9. And this is fast. This is really quick. How bad these kangaroos. They're already on A and they're not ready for it, Ents. Alex and Brace completely unlock the bomb site. And if you're Glaive and if you're D here, you're probably saving. 
a sick call from Bad News Kangaroos. Kind of praise that a lot of the, the calls they've been bringing out in the mid round, you know, because they've, they've been starting most of these rounds quite slow, you know, with a, a bit of poking, prodding outside pressure and then going off that. But this is the first one where they just go for a fast A. DR's ticking around because the bomb hasn't been planted yet. It's taking its time to get through. But they're being, they're, they, they know how important this round is. They're, they're not wanting to flub it. Do you reckon... No, if DR... DR could ninja defuse this. Yeah, he could. I don't think... No, they've been so diligent, that. even with the two-player advantage, just in making sure no one's going to pop up when you plant the bomb. He is sticking around. Addict's locked in. Like, I feel like Addict will go down with the ship here just to guarantee this can't happen. Diha, yeah, was going to try it. Addict, make sure that does not happen. No heartbreak today. Terrorists win. It's actually kind of a crazy... I mean, I guess he just has the MP9, right? So it's it's not the worst, but... Everyone else is just going to... They're going to be saving this round, right? So... Maybe it would have been nice to have that alongside the M4, but regardless, I mean, this was just a great round from Maddie's Kangaroo. It's just the perfect call to go for the fast day. After really setting the tempo of how they wanted to play all these T rounds out, they threw this one out at a critical juncture, and it's put Ents on, on a massive backflip. Overtime guaranteed, I think. And if not, even better, Anubis. Ents have been really slow to arrive in this map, and it's been individual efforts really bailing them out. It's a complete contrast to what we saw in Vertigo. Retakes have been pretty decent, but not giving themselves enough of a foothold on that T side could really come back to bite them. Well, looking to be locked in momentarily. And it's more pace. It's the USPs here. Oh, smoke gets dropped. Hades could maybe get a kill. They're going to force their way through it. Just the one, though. It's all good. Glaive arrives. Gets one in a bit. But just by pure firepower, they burst through ramp. And I think they knew. Ansa's money couldn't have been good. You can't, you can't flub this. This is an impossible round to lose. Imflubbable. There ain't no flub here. No flubbing. They're gonna, they're gonna clear they're gonna everything. Clear it. They've been so yeah, diligent. absolutely. It's cleared. Consider it cleared. Consider it cleared. By brace. Whew, no one was stressing. Map point secured. How are you feeling? Well, like I said, I, I thought this would be a, an easy series for them. You know, it took them a little bit to warm up on Vertigo, but now it's back to, you know, regular scheduled programming. I I, I mean, listen, I know you, you're going to think I'm biased, but you know, maybe you're not biased. In fact, you're, you're a lover of just good Counter-Strike. So, you know, when I say that I think that Brace is out calling Glaive, uh, do you think that that's a fair thing to say right now? Oh, on this that? map, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, that's a that's a <laughs> wild sentence in it. Like, <laughs> what on earth is going on? But you're right. It's been it's been like also like just the the art of deception, really, for Bandy's kangaroos. That's really formulated these T sides. Like, they've gone into hell in some rounds and then have reset and gone A through lobby. They've been down on B and then come back outside and walk through main. But it's the timing of these pushes that have really garnered them a lot of success. It really feels like they understand what's going on. PZ missed shot. Information goes both ways. There's no AWP for Ents either. Hades, he's down under, but Addict, 
He's well versed with it. Alex having a stellar T side. You know, Hazza was topping the board on the defense, but Addict is just killing everyone out here. Especially when it comes to these site takes. 5v4. DK look to close. Good flashbang. Kyla drops the smoke just in time. Put on notice. And so feeling this pressure. I think that they want to go outside based on Addict's positioning. PC's going to sell again a bit of A presence with a, a molly, I believe. That's going to come over the top. Amy is trying to take the fights. And that is keeping a lot of bodies on A. Spotted out from heaven. Oh, Deha, cool little spam. Doesn't do too much, though. And Kyla. Oh, the swing is good. PZ's out in the open with the AWP. Need to hit the perfect shot immediately. Oh, oh no, okay. time's running out. And Glaive's in the perfect position. Smoke forward. Bomb actually going to be planted in it. Glaive not going for the spam. Oh my god, Addict. Again, a massive kill from him. So Bomb planted. Dia fighting forward. Gets one onto Brace. All three CTs have to retake from the ramp. And Addict sets himself up. Hazza and Demio ready to support. More damage done. Keeping them at bay. Time is ticking down. Kyla has the kit. Demio shuts the door. Haz is looking for the fight. And they're running out of time. They need to find these kills, but they can't do it. It's all on the Kyla, and he's all out of time. Bad news, kangaroos. They're going to take Nuke and force us to a third. 